and Steph Curry dropping 43 in this one. Look, didn't get a ton of help, but look at the bright spot here from Andrew Wiggins. 17 points, 16 rebounds. Klay Thompson goes for 18. Didn't have a great night, but it's Steph Curry, 43 points, 10 rebounds as they even up the series at two games apiece. Our Kenny White told you to take the under on Jason Tatum, the under on Jalen Brown, the under on uh, also Klay Thompson. Those all hit. Steph Curry was the only big player in terms of the stars in this series to go over as he goes for 43 points. Part of the fourth quarter was a 10-0 run for the Warriors that really put it away. As I mentioned, they outscored the Celtics 17-3 over the final five minutes. And now Golden State, a perfect 6-0 following a loss this postseason, winning their past five by 10 or more points. We heard Bill Ryder before the game and he said, look, they play defense, they're going to win this game. They held the Celtics to under 100 points. Played good enough defense to win it. And it was Steph Curry, though, the story, as he puts the Warriors on their back, headed back to San Francisco, even Steven, two games apiece. Get right to the site. Welcome to CBS Sports NBA insider Bill Ryder, who joins us from TD Garden in Boston. Bill, what was it like watching Steph Curry pumping in 43 points, putting the team on his back? Yeah, I, I got to tell you, have those moments when you're lucky enough to be in a building like this on a night like this, and you know beyond a doubt you're watching one of the greats in the history of the sport having one of the great nights in the history of their career. That is what it felt like, deflating and brutalizing, certainly for TD Garden and all these Celtics fans. Not for those Warriors fans you might hear down the way, but a remarkable thing to see and an incredible reminder. Seven Curry, in one of the great players we've ever seen, one of the great performances. And on a night like this, he literally, even though it's a cliche, Akeem, willed his team into this game, into the victory, and back into this series. You said it, Bill Ryder. This is a rocking chair night. It's when you talk about when you're old and gray, whether you were in the building or Steph uh, telling his kids and grandkids about this one. It was simply spectacular to watch uh, through the screen. But being in the building and experiencing that, how did the foot look? Because that was a storyline over the last 24 hours leading up to this game. Didn't appear to hamper him whatsoever here in game four. Yeah, you're exactly right. And whether or not it was the okie dokie by Steph trying to outthink all of us in that Celtics team or his ability. And one of you said this before the game, right? There's the, the flu game for Jordan. Maybe this is the ankle game for Steph Curry. And it really was uh, overwhelming in some ways just being here and realizing as that fourth quarter played out that Steph Curry was going to do this on his own if need be. And you could sense and feel the panic shifting to that Celtics team as they realized it too. They were 7 for 21 in that fourth quarter. The weight of these moments are extravagant. They're huge. They're heavy. It's a big deal to try to win an NBA championship. And it's particularly difficult when Steph Curry is doing the things that we saw. It was extraordinary to watch. Steph Curry has never won finals MVP. Uh, he has two more games like this or somewhere in the neighborhood. He's going to win finals <laughs> MVP. Um, the guy that's not going to win finals MVP right now is Draymond Green. Uh, and I just want to bring him up momentarily, uh, Bill, because, look, I get it. His role in this series is not to score a bunch of buckets. But in, in four games, he has more fouls than points. He has 17 points and 18 fouls. What is happening with Draymond Green? Yeah, I think there's a few things. So look, he, he's played poorly. I think that's the reality, and he is, mo he is not a, a box score stuffer. His impact can sometimes be seen outside of that box score, but even that hasn't been particularly impressive. I think there's a few things going on, and I think it really does highlight, again, the remarkable nature of what Steph Curry did. Draymond Green wasn't great. Klay Thompson was, was, was fine. He had a big shot over the course of that run. I know Wiggins was helpful in terms of the rebound. He had some points. But Draymond, for me, guys, is somebody, and I know it seems like an imperfect comparison, but I covered that LeBron James team when he first went to Miami. Different players, different deals. But LeBron summoned down all this angst, all this frustration, all this attention, all this focus, and did rev up that first season in Miami, the big three and the not six and not seven. He revved up opponents to another level. Draymond Green has done that over the last couple games. He simply has on his podcast, in his post-game press conferences and comments, in his candor and his challenging approach. And it's always been who he is and the way he's played on the floor. And what the Celtics have done, despite the loss tonight, they've responded. They've said, okay, this is the way it's going to be. This is the challenge you've thrown down. We're going to meet that force with force. Steph Curry's been able to handle it, but Draymond Green has not. And I think the reality of that, 
the way that he has played, knowing he has to be a key cog in the machine, has clearly weighed on him as much as that fourth quarter weighed on the opponents, those Celtics tonight. Uh, Bill, we sort of talked about it after game one, the possibility of Klay Thompson and his struggles forcing him out of the rotation, or at least out of the starting rotation. Is that where we're at with Draymond? They look like a better basketball team with Kevon Looney on the court and Draymond on the bench here in game four. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting thought experiment. I think the reality for Steve Kerr, w whether you love or hate his, ro his approach rotationally, and I think Steve Kerr is clearly one of the great coaches in the history of the game, that might be where I would quibble with some of his decisions, not just in this series, but over the years. But, but no, I, I think that, that Kerr is going to roll with the guys that got him here. Mm -hmm. You're going to see Draymond Green and Clay Thompson and, and Steph Curry get as many minutes as Kerr is comfortable giving those guys. And I think what you'll, you'll hear from Kerr, or maybe what Draymond Green will hear from Kerr and we won't, is a challenge from Draymond to be better, to do the things that he needs to do, to have the impact you talk about, not necessarily stuffing the box score with a bunch of points, but trying to find ways to impact the game in a positive way for this Warriors team. And, and I'm not going to sleep on Draymond's ability to do that. He's a future Hall of Famer. He's a competitor. And this win, you know, Steph Curry didn't just save the series for the Warriors. It really gives a reset for Klay Thompson, for Draymond Green, for Jordan Poole, for this entire team. It's very different going back to Golden State at 2-2 than if you're down 3-1. One, and maybe that lack of pressure, that momentum, whatever you want to call it, is the key or one of the keys for some of these guys, Draymond included, to get to the level certainly the Warriors would like him to be at. Warriors outscored the Celtics 17-3 to over the final five minutes. Bill, what the hell happened? What was the breakdown <laughs> for Ime Udoka and the Celtics down the stretch? Now look, you, the X's and O's matter, and strategy matters, and, and the approach and adjustments you want to make, and Udoka's been as good as anybody matter. But the reality is that in these moments, when an NBA championship was on the line, it, it, it was. If the Celtics win this game, if they win that fourth quarter, they almost certainly win this NBA Finals at, at some point. And at least on this night, in this fourth quarter, there's still games to go. They weren't able to handle it. Steph Curry was extraordinary, and those Celtics, and you saw it, turned the ball over a few times, took some errant shots, forced some shots. And you can tell sometimes, guys, the difference between good ball movement and guys not wanting to shoot the ball in that moment. And there were several times, I thought, where Tatum and Brown and some of those players, Marcus Smart, passed up, not wide open looks, but the opportunity to shoot with that pressure bearing down. Al Horford wasn't afraid. He took a lot of those shots. He didn't make as many of them as he needed to. And in the end, if you are the Celtics and you're feeling the weight of history bearing down on you and the pressure of trying to win a championship and Steph is doing Steph things to the level we saw, it's got to be a guy like Tatum or Brown who takes and makes those shot shots. They didn't. And here we are. For as spectacular as the Warriors are, have always been, and were here in game four on the offensive end. Defense was your key to this game before tip, and it really showed its head throughout the course of the game. Uh, Boston didn't score 30 in a quarter. They scored 19 in the fourth. What did Golden State do differently to make things hard offensively on Boston, or was it just more missed shots from the Celtics here in game four? No, I think it's a little bit of both. I think you're absolutely right, and that's something, guys, we talked about before the game. I thought there were three keys. I was only right on two of them. Defense, Steph Curry, and getting some offensive help. He didn't get the offensive help. He just was the. Uh, he just had the excellence of two players on his own. But you're right. I thought there was a defensive intensity from the Warriors. They closed down in a much more effective way. You saw, I think, a more physical Golden State team to match what we saw in Game 3 from what is a more athletic Celtics team that's not afraid to take a punch and return it, metaphorically speaking. But I also think you got to look at the fourth quarter. I mean, the story was a close game until that fourth quarter. The Celtics weren't able to score, as you noted, down the stretch, outscored 17-3 to in the final part of that game, and were only, I think, 7 of 21 in that fourth quarter. So certainly the Warriors' defense kept them in the game the first three quarters, but I think really it was the Boston Celtics just under this massive pressure, and it's just one quarter, and you can learn from these things, but in that moment, and it was intense in here, and it felt angst-driven, in that moment over the course of that fourth quarter, they simply couldn't handle what was in front of them. Tied 2-2, heading back to San Francisco. Bill, what have you learned through four games of this NBA Finals? <laughs> the same thing that I'm supposed to have learned over the last 15 years covering this <laughs> league that is easy to forget. You've got to be careful basing what you think or what you think you know on what happened yesterday or a couple days ago. Momentum shifts are massive, and the reality is that this is a Golden State Warriors team who have a couple advantages over the Boston Celtics, even if on paper and until this night it looked like Boston had some, uh, some, some advantages that might take them all the way. One of those is Steph Curry. You can't sleep on what it means to have the best player on the floor on any given night. Most nights, that's Steph. And the other thing, again, another cliche, but it's true. We call it championship DNA. What that really means is the experience from a core group of guys in this Warriors team 
who have been through these moments, who know what it feels like, who understand not just success, but what it is to panic or to lose or not be able to bring it home, whatever it is. Mm. And that is a reality, and that is a weapon for this Warriors team. He saw in the fourth quarter to be able to take this series back to Golden State at 2-2. For me, the lesson is it is anybody's series. You can't make up your mind based on one thing that you see. It's going to be a hell of an NBA Finals, but there's no way to know who comes out on top because whoever can dominate these moments at the end of games that we saw the Warriors do in this one and the Celtics do at the start of the series, that's going to be the team that wins. Well, your Warriors in six still very much in play at plus 375. I agreed with you. You agreed. We were all in on Warriors uh, in six, and that's still very uh, a real possibility here because, look, I got them winning game five back at home. They're not losing another game at Chase. I, I, I'm saying that's my, that's my prediction. We will see yes. if the streak holds. <laughs> we'll see. And that streak would guarantee us seven. We're always guaranteed to have a good time with our Bill Ryder. Thank you, Bill. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.